We've got a five-match T20 International Series coming up. It starts tomorrow at Harare Sports Club, the home of cricket here in Zimbabwe. 1 p.m. Zimbabwe taking on India. And uh, we've got Dirk here this morning. Dirk, good morning. I know it's been a hectic week for you guys, but probably longer than, longer than a week in terms of pre preparing for, for India's visit. What has it been like, especially after India arrived? I think it was on Tuesday or Wednesday, is it? They arrived on Tuesday. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Titch. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what's been more hectic. You making me wake up early this morning <laughs> uh, to get here. Yeah. But uh, I made it yeah. uh, in the traffic. Um, yeah, it's, it's been great. You know, I India struggled a little bit to get out of Barbados after winning the World Cup. They've been back. I don't know if you've seen the pictures on social yeah, media. They, I think the, 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 the rest of the squad is here to get back to India. Are they back? Mainly the management. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, but they've settled in. Yeah. arrived on Tuesday. They had their first run around on, on Wednesday. So they, they'll have decent preparation. Um, but just great to have them here. You know, I, I think that if you're not really a, a cricket supporter, you know, could you imagine a nation hosting Brazil in football? Yeah. Or a nation hosting the Springboks or the All Blacks in rugby? That's how big it is. Yeah, and I, I was saying that, and I've been saying, and I'm glad you actually used that Brazil example because I've used it several times yeah. this week just to try and uh, quantify the magnitude of the tour. I think, I think last year again we had India uh, coming coming there through. Was a year before. A, a year yeah, before, yeah, yeah. yeah, India coming through. But I want to speak because even if when you look at the big three, whether it's your England, your Australia, or South Africa, everybody wants India to come and tour because uh, the ripple effect in terms of just the quality of play on the field and even off the field is bonkers, if I can call it that. Yeah, it, it is. I think there's a couple of things to consider. You, you know, when you have the world champions, or even India if they weren't, um, there's a financial ripple effect to that. Um, I think the fact having them here, uh, you look at world sport uh, and what people want to watch is the big teams playing against each other. And, and India have been that uh, sort of uh, friend of ours that that have come, like you said, two years ago they came, and, and world sport has to be very cognizant of the fact that if you just maintain the top echelons, if the Springboks and the All Blacks played against each other all the time, or Brazil against Argentina, um, where does the sport go? Uh, and India has just been fantastic that they come here and allow us uh, to compete against them. It's a great uh, test for us. It's a great opportunity. I was lucky enough in my day to play against India, uh, but it'll be a massive occasion not only for our country but for our players as well. So it's very exciting. Uh, at the top of the interview, I highlighted how busy I assumed you were in terms of the preparations. How ready are you guys as Zimbabwe Cricket to host India in terms of maybe uh, the play starting tomorrow? And what are your expectations in terms of maybe uh, the fan engagement, people coming to Arara Sports Club and all the ancillary services that might come with it? Because if you look at the last couple of years, especially in terms of the fan culture around our game, I think it has been vibrant. It has been exciting. I think we've had uh, capacity crowds, whether it was yeah. during the qualifiers or even uh, two years ago when India came through. What are your expectations and how ready are you guys as a Marvel cricket? So, uh, from an operations perspective, you know, we've done it before and, and the team that we have at Zimbabwe Cricket, those on the ground are fantastic. Um, to the extent that some of our, our uh, staff and, and one of them in particular who would be heading up as the chairman of the organizing committee was actually working on the World Cup. That's the level of some of the staff we've got. So I have no doubt that from that perspective, the organization and the readiness uh, from uh, making sure everything's in place, not too concerned about that. Uh, the fan engagement and, and people coming to watch, you know, we can only do our bit in, in offering something uh, as an entertainment for people to come and enjoy. Um, but having said how manic it's been, um, I, I don't know if my wife's watching. I missed, <laughs> I missed picking up the kids once yeah. uh, already this week. How, 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 because I've been are you in the doghouse now? I, I'm not too bad. Um, not too bad yet because I only did it once. Um, but it has. It's been manic. People arriving and, and wanting tickets. We're looking at what we're doing for extra parking. You know, we, we're not... Uh, spoilt for parking at Harare Sports Club. So we're looking at options that we can offer some more of that uh, through Royal Golf Club. Um, I think we're ready. Uh, I think Zimbabwe is ready. Um, we've been through a bit of a phase. Obviously not going to the World Cup was, was very hurtful for us. We didn't make it there and we probably should have. Um, but it's a new start. You know, It's almost like a start of a season. New coaches, 
a couple of new names in the squad, and I'm expecting a little bit of excitement. Nothing wrong with the previous coaching staff, yeah. uh, but Zimbabwe Cricket through the board have, have uh, made a couple of changes. Um, they, they've also been aggressive in what they want to see in Zimbabwe Cricket. And I think that's going to roll into the game. I, I watched the players. I should be working. But <laughs> I went and watched a bit of the training yeah. yesterday uh, in the nets and, and on the field. And there seems to be this enthusiasm and energy amongst the Zimbabwe side. And, and I'm hoping that that's going to play out into the games. I mean, you're a former player with the national team yourself. And you highlighted that you did face India. You know, uh, looking at this crop of players, I think, you know, with the exception of maybe Sakanda Raza, Tendai Chatara, Wellington Masakadza, uh, the rest of the squad is relatively young, relatively inexperienced. W would there be much pressure on them in terms of uh, facing uh, world champions India and the pressure that comes with the eyeballs that are going to be there at Arara Sports Club, the eyeballs that are going to be there globally in terms of uh, people who want to watch India uh, in action against Zimbabwe? In a way, I hope so. Um, I, I think that putting yourself under that kind of pressure and coping with that is what you need to do because that's your job and, and that's the reality of what you're going to face. Uh, having said that, I, I think that the youthful exuberance also gives you an opportunity to go and express yourself. Uh, and sort of listening to some of the stuff that I've heard, uh, heard uh, in the nets and on the field is, is allowing them to say, without fear, go and express yourself. Don't also write off the fact that India are coming with a very young side. Yep. Virat Kohli, Rohit Sharma, even their coach Roald Dravid have now retired. So there's a couple of players from India who now want to step up and, and, and take those uh, spots. Uh, they'll be under pressure as well. So I think there's going to be this sort of openness and, and the shackles are off. Uh, let's just play from both teams yep. because they both want to impress. Uh, there's a new coach in place for Zimbabwe, there's a new coach in place for India, and both teams are going to go and express themselves. I, I think it's going to be exciting. All right, let's talk about the fans, and obviously uh, all of us who want to come and back the boys. I think it's Saturday, Sunday, and then Wednesday, and then Saturday, Sunday. It was a bit strategic. Yeah, very you guys good. Make sure, yeah. <laughs> guys make sure that we come through uh, on the weekends. But in terms of... Uh, the ticketing uh, just available at the ground or can people purchase them anywhere, anywhere else? You know what, Zimbabwe's always been at the ground mm. so, so we'll maintain that. Um, it, it's hard for me to say how many people will come uh, but I, I think just be careful of not being disappointed. You'll, you'll gauge it in the first game if, if you're planning on not coming down on Saturday. Yep. Uh, you'll be able to see how many people are there. So if you do decide to come on the other days, don't come too late. The games start at 1 o'clock. Yep. The gates will be open two hours before. Um, but yeah, we're expecting a big crowd. Uh, how we control that, I don't know. Uh, but it'll be great to, to get Zimbabwe out to support the team. And, and I look forward to, to packing Arari Sports Club. And obviously, I mean, we're just getting into the series. Uh, it's got five matches to come up. But what do you hope to be the impact of this particular visit uh, of India to Zimbabwe? Because I remember having conversations uh, with the chairman, Tawenga Mkukhani, yeah. uh, just uh, two years ago after that. And I think there was a lot of conversations around how maybe we didn't benefit as much because a lot of the, uh, the agreements had been made during COVID and yeah. all that. But now, obviously, I'm sure it's a different situation. What do you expect to be the impact on and off the field post, uh, post the tour? So I, I guess more from a cricket perspective yep. you know like I said to you um, Zimbabwe cricket as of Tuesday almost drew a line in the sand uh, take nothing away from the previous uh, sort of uh, coaching staff and whatever but but there is new there yeah uh, it's almost like when you buy a new car yep. you know there, there's going to be an element of excitement um, you know for me cricket has to be progressive we have to as Zimbabwe cricket, look past what is going to be the end result next Sunday. Uh, and regardless of what those results are, we leave for Ireland on the 16th, so the day after, we're off to Ireland for a test match. We come back, we've got Pakistan here, we've got Afghanistan here, we've got Ireland here, in the back of our minds, 2027, hosting the World Cup. So, don't get me wrong, yep. India being here is massive. Uh, the financial impact of hosting the world champions is a huge result for us, and, and that will help us as we prepare in the long term. But, but as an operations guy, you know, I'm, I'm looking at where we're going to be at the end of this tour. Let's reassess. Where are we as players? What are we doing from an operations perspective? What do we need to do better? Because yes, the end goal is 2027, but there's all this stuff, those small little steps that get us to hosting that World Cup. 
And this is the start of that. Uh, I like that you brought out 2027 were co-hosting with Namibia and South Africa. So I think in terms of our hearts, we're guaranteed yeah. at least a place at that World Cup. But uh, I get the sense that the work has already begun in terms of uh, preparations uh, for that. Can we exp I mean, you talked about our sports club and, you know, over the years we've seen, uh, especially for the bigger games and tournaments, it being packed to capacity. Any plans to try and make sure that maybe that's expanded or... Uh, changes to the venue as part of that preparation? Have, have you guys gotten to that stage yet or are you still in the planning? So, so not totally got to that stage. Uh, there has been a couple of talks. Uh, we've had a visit from the ICC and we've had a visit from... So as much as we're co-hosting, South Africa will head up that hosting with us. So we've had a delegation from South Africa that's come and had a look at Queens and Harare Sports Club on, on little areas that we, we want to increase on or change or whatever. So there is some of that stuff. Uh, none of it has started yet. Um, and then obviously is for us to work out, um, you know, where do we fit that work in? You know, cricket has to continue. So you can't totally shut down Harare Sports Club. You could move to Bulawayo and, and then give this time. Um, but small stuff, you know, stuff that people might not see. Drainage at Harare Sports Club, they want a full sprinkler system, they want underground uh, drainage. So those are things behind the scenes. Uh, but yes, there is plans to increase uh, the stands, uh, mainly Castle Corner side, so the town side of the ground, and, and make sure that we can fit more people. But remember that that comes with the extra pressure of parking and safety and whatever. So there's a lot of work to be done. Uh, it's exciting because, you know, it will grow uh, the sport in Zimbabwe and, and the growth of the game having India here it grows other things, it grows facilities, it gives opportunity to develop other areas in Zimbabwe. We're proud to say that we're one of the only sports that when you say in Zimbabwe truly national and, and all the way around the country, we're proud in saying that we are one of those sports. And, and this will help us grow that in the other areas. Uh, before I let you go, I'll, I'll be remiss not to do this, but obviously uh, the NPL has been a big part of our cricket development, I think, over the last couple of years. What have you made of uh, this uh, year's edition and uh, what, what role do you think it is playing as we sign off in terms of making, making sure that we increase that player base and make the sport uh, spread across uh, different parts of the country? I think it's a great uh, tournament. Uh, I give credit to our MD, you know, it was his brainchild and he sat down with me and, and, and he spoke about what he wanted from the NPL. I, I think the opportunity to find great players that hopefully will then transition into provincial, uh, into the A-side, into the national team. We have to make sure that everything has purpose as we go up the rung. And NPL plays a critical part in that in how it brings together, like I said, a national sport. Sport played all over. We have teams from Matari, Kwekwe, uh, Kodoma, uh, Masvingo, Bulawayo. They're all in part of that. And that gives us an opportunity to see those people and give them a mantle to perform and showcase their skills and hopefully progress into provincial stuff. So for me, a great tournament and, and I, I look forward to it getting bigger and better and seeing those youngsters that are coming through that hopefully one day will play at Harare Sports Club. Uh, thank you very much, Dirk Willey, on the Zimbabwe Cricket uh, General Manager, joining us, approving that big tour uh, between Zimbabwe and India. It gets underway uh, tomorrow. Konapo Konapo, Ipapwe Papo, Pazetien Prime, DSTV Channel 294, the place to be.